to almost every automotive OEM, foreign and national, uh, foreign and domestic. Uh, at any point of time, we are con concurrently working with a uh, lot of automakers. Uh, um, you know, at any given point of time. The other enablers were the history, uh, the the market size. We realized that India is going to be a big market with low penetration levels of. Uh, you know, even as, as I talked to you today, it's 11 cars per thousand people, which is abysmally low. Uh, if you have to come up to the levels of the United States or Europe, it's 1.2 people per car. And considering that the automotive, uh, or, or that the automobile is a very aspirational product, a product that uh, in, uh, enhances your social status, it gives you the freedom, it gives you the mobility, it gives you the feel good factor, it gives you the thrill of speed. Uh, it's my uh, understanding that we will have to get uh, down to the same ratios as Europe and United States and therefore to go from 11 cars per thousand to 500 cars per thousand. I have been stating in, in various meetings and forums that Indian, the Indian auto industry will have to grow in excess of 20 percent per annum for the next 20 years. Um, and therefore, because of the huge, huge and sizable population, there is a huge car market and the competitive pressures, I am talking about now from DC Design's point of view that if we are able to deliver our services uh, at a faster time and at a lower cost uh, and if we have done a great job and are doing a great job, uh, we have huge competitive advantage as well. This is, this is what I just spoke. And you know, uh, since we were incepted in 1993, we have, we have had a first mover advantage by a wide margin. Uh, you know, today it's not possible for for any company or any organization to to create a DC design just because you deploy some amount of capital. It's taken us 17 years to prove our worth, and and therefore we have built a huge, huge entry barrier. Again, my background, education, experience. And current scenario. I'm sorry, there's some 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 duplication in some of the slides. Okay, <clears throat> some of the bedrock values that we have. I realized early on that we will be competing with car manufacturers. So what's our place under the sun? And I realized that my positioning of the company is going to be radical design and positioning. We want to create products that manufacturers cannot or will not, from a viability perspective. Uh, employee employer equi equilibrium. Uh, you know, we have attained this largely, I mean we have no employee turnover and that is primarily, primarily because uh, our employees do not know which organization to go through, to go, go to, it is because we are paying them international prices here and we are able to do that because we have spread our risk. We are, we are able to get business from Europe, we are able to therefore give them higher salaries than what they can get in India. So it is become a mutual detente. We can't get better people than them, they can't get better jobs than us. Uh, employee growth, uh, we have a very inclusive and very flat structure and organization and therefore, uh, you know, we do not have siloed compartments. Uh, the way it works for us is that um, an HR head is also able to sit at a conference table and talk about emotion and design and that and that is what we find is the biggest strength because, uh, you know, each one is excited, it's just not doing his job alone. Even our, even our accounts, uh, people have the sensitivity to innovation and new products and it helps uh, de, uh, you know, declog the system. Otherwise, usually these departments won't have the sensitivity. Uh, vendor growth, we believe in our company that uh, our supplier is more important than our customer. If we do a great job, if we build a better mousetrap, the customer will anyway come. Uh, we concentrate more on the suppliers because they're so, uh, you know, in the in in the world of business, suppliers are usually taken for granted. And when we have that philosophy, our suppliers find it very refreshing. And we will we are able to get the best out of them, though we don't give them volumes. We become the choice, the first choice for them. Uh, and I have seen that it's not all about money; it's about wanting to do different, wanting to feel great working for this company that also makes matters a lot easier. As I said, we do not really care for the customer. I know it is a very controversial statement, but it is exactly what we do. I mean, we never pander to a customer because we know what exactly what we are delivering and we know that if we do a job well, the customer has to come to you. We do not have to really worry about that. 
and whatever we do uh, has to have a global relevance. Whenever we design a car or build a car or even specify a car, we always go through a matrix of answering whether that car, if they, it was to be shipped today to Frankfurt, whether it would uh, be current there. And uh, you know, that really decides the, the shape of the car or the quality of the car or the specification of the car. So what I'm trying to say is we don't design something that's only good for India because we realize that if we really aim for that high benchmark, everything else follows. So we built our own USP, design, uh, which is uh, one of uh, being uh, able to produce extreme cars for Mr. Extreme. We don't produce cars for Mr. Average because the industry does that. And uh, we have a disruptive innovation at work where we are the only company in the world which makes digital engineering or digital data to craftsmanship. Uh, we have also realized, you know, the, uh, understanding from the uh, history of some of the car design firms that have failed in other parts of the world, we realize that we have had to have a dynamic sales metric. So on the one hand, we have automotive OEMs, domestic and foreign. We have non-automotive OEMs, domestic and foreign. And we have individuals. So we have a very dynamic B2B and a B2C uh, mix. Um, and that really is very evenly balanced. 50% of our revenue comes from B2B, 50% comes from B2C. And what it has helped us is we get the learnings of B2B because you are doing advanced models. We apply them on the cars that we do for B2C. And likewise, all the learnings of market trends and expectations and quality requirements and features, we are able to get from the B2C market because our customers tend to be the elite and we actually share that information with the B2B. So it's a very dynamic matrix. Even from a product point of view, you'll see in our presentation, we have you know, cars, SUVs, MPVs, business vans, uh, large coaches, and, and the works. You know. So it's a very dynamic matrix, and we never have a dull moment any point of the day, uh, more so because we're into design. Every minute of the day, we are creating something that was not created yesterday. And the entry barrier has, uh, of course, risen because um, uh, we had the courage to do something different. We had the courage to, to put our back to the walls. Uh, it's my firm belief that we will only succeed if you have a back to the wall. If you have choices, you are going to fail because in your mind you know you have choices. So you, you will never give your best for survival. Um, we had the vision to really do something which was in the long term. Uh, we took risks, um, you know, I personally took a risk of dumping a cushy job at General Motors where I would be vice president by, by now and I said, no, I want to come to India, build an uh, entrepreneurial company because finally I would be successful. So we took risks. Uh, we overestimate other people's intelligence, for example. Uh, we are very, very, uh, uh, you know, that's a very strong philosophy in our, in our company. We don't underestimate anyone, not even a pune. We, we feel he has the same IQ, probably didn't have the same opportunities. And I think that has held us in real good stead because we're keen observers for small things between the lines. And that really, really has helped us a huge, in, in, in a huge manner. We are continuously trying to get into other areas to optimize uh, value. Uh, we realize that if for, for per square foot or per, square, per, or per employee, uh, if the automotive industry is giving us an X return or X revenue, we need to make it 2X and 3X because we are not going to get a larger number of skill sets. And how do we really use the skills to juice out more revenue or more profits? And so we keep getting into other areas as well. And that really stimulates the organization because there are so many learnings from other areas as well. You know, I, I think some of you might know that we did the uh, Dhruv helicopter for HL, a civilian version. And that really, uh, not only did we designed, we actually built and certified the road, uh, I mean the airworthy uh, chopper 
uh, which was demanded by the military. So, it, it actually exposed us to a whole new level of uh, performance requirements which, the, which, which was not uh, really uh, one of the stumbling blocks when we work with the automotive industry. And of course, it is my personal passion that uh, I paint and I sculpt. Uh, this is the uh, concluding part of my presentation. This is a portfolio, and uh, so this is the last uh, concept that we did for the 2010 Delhi Auto Expo. This is we call it the Super S SUV, Super Super or Super Sport Utility Vehicle. It is built on the Audi Audi Q7 platform. This is an MPV that again was at the Auto Expo 2010. Um, this is based on the Tata Winger. It was a very retro um, style, it was inspired by the 60s movement in America that was heralded by the Volkswagen minibus. This is the interior of that vehicle, it is a very club like interior, lounge like interior. This is a standard package on the Innova, it is a very popular model, uh, very, very reasonably priced. We have invested a lot of money in this tooling and you know, we, we, we currently doing 60 a month, uh, we plan to go to 200 a month, we are investing more amount of money in tooling. In fact, we have several of these vehicles in Chennai as well. This is a Renault Twizy concept car that we did. Um, which debuted in Paris 2009. It was also at Auto Expo. All electric vehicle. Some cars that we designed for Reva, all electric. These some uh, one of these models is expected to be in the market by December, I'm told. Of course, this is a big break, the Aston Martin uh, V advantage that we did. Uh, this was the first breakthrough that we had, 2003, the car debuted at Cobo Center, Detroit, uh, Logan Step for Renault, the Chevrolet Beat for, for General Motors. This was a two-door concept that we did before, uh, you know, the car went into production. This was of course, uh, premiered at the New York Motor Show in 07. The BMW Mini last year at Frankfurt, sorry, uh, last year at uh, Paris. Some Rolls Royces for private individuals in the UK. The Gaia based on the Mitsubishi uh, 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 Lancer Evolution 8. This was our, uh, the Gaia was our showing at the Geneva Motor Show 2003. We have taken part in three Geneva Motor Shows because when we were, we were promoting the European uh, concept car building business we realized that we have to come to the notice of car makers in Europe and we have had to spend big amounts of money in those three years because that is the only way to come up to come to the notice of them. This was the infill based on the Toyota MR2 platform 